Hello friends, welcome to this episode of Blossoms and Bourbon. I'm excited to welcome you back into my shop again and uh, to explore two things that I love, flowers and bourbon. Um, so first of all, the flower portion of what we're gonna do for this episode, um, I thought I'd show you a design style that I really love. I, I don't know what it is about this style that I've always liked, but it's called parallel design. And as you might imagine, um, the, the parallel form of the materials that we use in this arrangement is where it gets its name from. Um, so I'm gonna to start to work on it and we'll talk about it a little bit at the same time. Of course, one of the most important elements about a parallel design is the use of line flowers. Uh, basically, there are three different types of flowers. A line flower that's long and slender that creates a line. A form flower, which typically is rounder and has like a form to it. Roses being an example of a form flower and then smaller little flowers that are called filler flowers uh, that will be used to fill in a design. Now, I'm also grouping something I talked to you about before, uh, the different types of flowers that will go together um, so that it almost looks like a natural sort of, um, like the design's just growing in this wooden box that I've used today for the arrangement. Do love the curl of these Bells of Ireland, and that's gonna be one of those things I think is gonna make this parallel design a little bit more my style than a strict parallel design because there's a little curve to it. There's gonna create a little bit of movement to the design. Um, but that's gonna be part of the fun. All right, we're gonna use these beautiful blue iris. And one of the things that you'll notice that I'm gonna do as I'm placing the material is I'm gonna leave some spaces in them. Um, and that's an important part of parallel design um, it's an important part of what makes it parallel because then you can actually see that the materials are spaced in parallel lines. Um, so that's, that's gonna be an important part of how this goes together. Good old carnations. I was talking to somebody today and I said that I felt carnations were the great misunderstood flower. Um, they come in beautiful colors, they last forever. They're so sturdy, they're so forgiving, yet people don't like them for some reason, they have a negative association with them. Okay, I'm working on what I think is the front, so I'm just gonna spin this around so you can kind of see where we are at this point. All right. And one of the things I'm gonna do now is kind of bring the design down to the edge of this container. So we're gonna make it, you know, apart from the, the height, and the drama of the height that we've got in it, we're gonna bring some flowers down to the base. So it's a little more relatable, as it were, to the, a little more grounded. This rose is a beautiful rose, it's called Deep Purple. Uh, I'm not sure why it has that name, because it's not particularly deep purple to me, but um, it is a beautiful color. And that was one thing that I did when I was choosing the materials for today is using these relational colors. The blues, purples, and greens on the color wheel um, are all related to each other. So that was kind of a fun element about that. All right, let's pop this other carnation in here. This truck, I should talk about this lovely silver stuff that's in here. Um, this is actually just a foil lined uh, packing material, but it is watertight. So I chose to use that in this wooden box because I didn't want it to leak uh, with water in the, in the foam. But there is foam in this box, as you can see, that's just below the level of the rim of the container. And that's because I want the flowers to literally look like they're coming out of the box. Um, I don't want any foam to show or to have to worry about covering up the foam, as it were. All right, these pretty little mums, we're gonna just snip them a little bit. I'm gonna leave the foliage on there just like that. I'm gonna use that kind of in front of the liatris. But then for a little more grounding, we're gonna go down on the side there. I'm gonna spin this around for you in just a second. One thing that I like about parallel style is that it's not so busy. Um, you can Google parallel design, parallel floral design, and look at a lot of different versions of this. 
and you'll see that some of them have so much material in them, it's really hard to even tell where the lines are. Um, for me, that's not a good thing. When you're doing a parallel design, it should be very obvious to you where the lines are in the arrangement and where the materials are that you're using. So that's one of the things I like about this and leaving those spaces between the materials so that again, you can kind of see how those lines form. Um, I think that's super cool. All right, we're not gonna do a lot more with this. A little bit of foliage in the back. Love this sword fern. It's a great kind of limey green that complements this purple that we're doing really, really well. And also kind of blends with the Bells of Ireland over on the other side. And you'll notice that I'm stripping the foliage even that goes below the level of this foam. Uh, that is something we've talked about relative to keeping um, your flower arrangements long lasting and not having the growth of bacteria in them. Um, so even when you can keep leaves below the level of the foam out of the picture, that's a good thing. All right, I'm liking where that's going. And now to finish this off, I'm just gonna use some moss. Um, again, because I want this to look natural, I want this to look like it's just growing here. I've got some regular natural green sheet moss. I've dampened it a little bit so it's nice and pliable. I'm gonna spin this around again so I can see it. And I'm just gonna tuck it around the edges. Obviously covering up the silver shiny stuff that we don't wanna see in this very natural organic design. But it almost looks like sod, you know, at this point. So in this beautiful old wooden box, um, it really does look like it's just sort of naturally growing there. Which maybe is another one of the reasons I like this style so much. If you feel the need to, you can, when you're working with moss like this, use some wire and create a little hairpin with the wire. So you just bend it over into like a little hairpin shape and tuck that into the moss so it'll stay in place. Uh, for this application, I don't really think we need to do that, but um, that's something that often we would do. All right, so there you have my interpretation of a parallel design. Uh, again, one of my favorite designs. This would be great on a sideboard or a front entry table in someone's home. Um, so consider sim sending something like this when you're sending flowers to someone for them to use in their home. It's a great application, a beautiful style, very natural and very organic. So thanks for watching while we talked about parallel. And then the reward, remember the reward that always comes from working with flowers is bourbon. So today, I will have to tell you that I called my wife and I said, oh man, we're doing the video. I forgot the bourbon. Could you bring me bourbon? And she said, well, sure, what do you want? And I said, I really kind of like to do Woodford Double Oaked. And she said, yeah, I'm pretty sure we don't have any of that at the house. I knew we had some at the house, but she really likes it. So anyway, she was kind enough to bring over her Woodford Double Oaked um, bourbon. This bourbon is distilled and bottled in Kentucky. We've had the fun and the privilege of going to the Woodford Distillery. It's actually one of the oldest operating distilleries in the country. Uh, and some of the buildings on the property date back to the 1800s. It's a very, very cool place to visit if you ever have the opportunity to. Um, this bourbon gets its name, Double Oak, from the fact that it's aged, just like all of their bourbons, in new American oak casks. And then it's taken out and it's aged a second time in casks. So that's where the double oaked comes from. Um, it is subsequently a little more expensive because of that process, uh, but it's also very smooth. It's, it's delicious. Um, I will also show you again, using the mixtures that we had before, the coloration of the two, you can see that the double oaked is a little darker and the darkness comes from the fact that it's been aged uh, longer in those barrels than uh, some other bourbons have been. So, on the nose. Yeah, this is just, Debbie's right. This is good.
definitely a little bit of a fruity element to it. I think that's the first time I've ever really noticed like a cherry kind of note to it. So look at me trying to sound like I know what I'm talking about. Um, but definitely a really, really good sipping bourbon. Debbie likes to drink it with a mixer, um, but this is one I think you'll enjoy. Yeah, definitely. A fine way to end the day. You guys, thank you so much for being back with us again. Um, I so appreciate it. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe because we want to see you back here again for the next edition of Blossoms and Bourbon. Thank you so much. <laughs>